Hi everybody, if you've been or are a subscriber to our channel you'll know that we've been undergoing a, a vlog for our North Coast 500 adventure. Now I'm not going to talk too much about the North Coast 500 adventure that we had because you're going to see plenty more of that but I want to talk to you about AGAS, the AGAS Field Study Centre which uh, if you don't know where it is, is about 30 minutes drive from Inverness, about five miles from the village of Bewley. You can easily get there by road, rail or by air. There's an airport at Inverness and it's about, as I say, about half an hour from there. Now we've been interested in AGAS for many years, we've been following it on Facebook and uh, their newsletter on Twitter and it's always been our hope that one day we might actually get to visit the Field Study Centre. Well this year was a, a bit of a special year for us, uh, it was our 46th wedding anniversary during our adventure but more importantly, Jan finally fully retired from work at the end of August. So we wanted to mark it with some special event and it just so happened that it fitted in very well that we could spend two days at the Field Centre as part of our North Coast 500 adventure. And it certainly turned out to be the highlight of our trip around the north coast of Scotland. Let's make one thing clear that uh, Agas isn't a zoo and it isn't a reserve in the normal sense of the word. It's a highland estate that is situated in a very beautiful part of the southern highlands or central highlands maybe uh, which has some wonderful wildlife around it and all that has happened is that they've devoted their time to the study and preservation of that wildlife. They do have a, a captive rearing program of wildcats there as well but you'll have to read their information on that. The history of Agas as an estate is quite an interesting one and again I would suggest that you read that from the net or other sources rather than take up all this video telling you about that. But what I will tell you is that it's the family home of Sir John and Lady Lister Kay and their daughter Hermione and her family as well and it is a really wonderful place to go and stay. We've been put off for many years, one because it's, it is quite expensive but it's worth it and uh, secondly we, we're not very good at mixing with experts. We're just amateurs who love watching wildlife and uh, I'm afraid experts sometimes turn us off. But you won't find any of that there, it's, uh, it's just one big happy family. The hospitality is second to none. One thing that we found there very much is it is just like a big family and that many of the people we met there have been coming there for many years and one in particular, one man who'd been coming at least once a year, sometimes several times a year, for over 10 years. And so everybody is interested in what you're trying to see and giving helpful advice where you might actually see what you want to see and also seeking your advice about things as well and it's quite an interesting hotbed of people who just love wildlife and if you possibly can make an opportunity to go there it is open to visitors I think from April to October and uh, you can go there in several different ways. You can go there on a guided week where they have um, sometimes well-known experts who sort of guide you in a particular subject or generally in wildlife. There was a party that w when we were there, 
led by Mark Cocker, who is uh, from our part of Norfolk, and um, we were actually staying in the same lodge as him, and uh, quite an interesting man. He's an author and writes in The Guardian in their country diaries. Or you can go there on a particular interest. They have all sorts of weeks there, uh, whiskey and wildlife, art and culture, uh, bird watching, you name it, they probably do it. You can go there on a tailor-made basis where you speak to them about the sort of wildlife that you want to see and they'll try and get you in a position to be able to see that. Or you can go just like we did on a bed and breakfast basis. But one thing is for sure, you're all treated all the same. It's a lovely place to stay. The accommodation is comfortable and very well laid out in the lodges where there's a great chance of seeing wildlife just from them. But there are lots of hides there as well where you can see specific wildlife like red squirrels, pine martins, badgers, beavers, uh, crested tits. In fact, we went hoping to see beavers and crested tits. Sadly, we didn't see either, so that will have to wait for another time. But we did see plenty of other good wildlife, and certainly it turned out to be one of the highlights of our holiday. And if you stay there, you eat communally in a baronial-type hall, which oh, doesn't look very good in the video because it's uh, empty, but uh, we don't we didn't really want to impinge on people's uh, privacy by filming them um, but it comes alive when it's full of people and we're all talking about wildlife and uh, interested in the person themselves and their interests and loves and uh, each mealtime Sir John or one of the rangers gets up and gives a, a bulletin on uh, what has been seen, what is hoped to be seen during the day and what uh, is going on locally. One thing that really impresses you about the place are their rangers. They have about eight or nine bright young people there, people who are, have either already finished and graduated in uh, some sort of environmental wildlife course or are actually studying for one and I guess that there are a few Chris Packhams and David Attenboroughs there as well as uh, Kate Humbles and the like. They're really knowledgeable people, very helpful and I have to say without their help I wouldn't have got to some of the hides there because of my mobility problems but nothing was ever too much trouble for them. They were always ready to help, always ready to offer advice. Um, and particularly, we'd like to thank uh, Danny and Pete, who were particularly helpful to us. You have to say that the hospitality and the food were second to none at Agas. It really did make the day either to start off the day before watching wildlife with a good breakfast or to finish the day and talk about the wildlife that you'd seen with other people and the food is really good. We had a wonderful two days there and we'd certainly love to go back there again in the future. Anyway I'll let you watch the rest of the video Thanks for watching, bye for now and we hope again we'll see you again very soon.